Hi everyone. Uh, so uh, let me start uh, with this video explaining about the last data link layer design issues, which deals with error control and flow control. We started off discussing our discussion with the different types of services that are actually offered to the network layer. And then we studied about the different framing techniques that are implemented at the data link layer. And now we have come to the last design issue where we are going to talk about why error control should be implemented, what are the different things that we need to ensure error control, and why flow control is important and how it should be implemented. So first things first, let us uh, start with error control. Now with framing techniques, with, with those techniques being used, the problem of marking and identifying the frame boundaries is solved. So the receiver can now identify where the frame starts and where the frame ends pretty easily. But the problem now is how can the sender be assured that the frame has been received or delivered without errors and in the same order as sent that means that how can a sender be uh, how can a sender confidently say that the frame is indeed delivered and it has been delivered without any errors and also the same order has been delivered or not now this is actually has to be taken up by the data link layer okay now in order to add a little bit of uh, perception to it if you remember correctly data link layer is sitting on top of your physical layer right the physical layer's duty is to convert the data taken into signals and transmit it across the medium it is not going to be bothered about whether there are any transmission errors that are happening whether the received data has got any errors or not it is up to the data link layer to ensure that your uh, physical layer or physical medium appears error free to the upper layers. So any errors that are happening or that happen uh, during transmission at the physical layer should be masked from the upper layers. Then how does it do that? By simply retransmitting any error frames or any frames that are lost during transmission. But these things to happen, there are three important things that are actually used at the data link layer to ensure that the frames are delivered without any errors. The first one is introduction of acknowledgements. Reliable delivery is achieved using the acknowledgements with the retransmission paradigm. That means that whenever the receiver returns a special acknowledgement frame to the sender, indicating the correct receipt of a frame. In simple terms, if A is the sender, and it has sent a frame to B. Now, B has to send an acknowledgement back to A, confirming the receipt of the frame. Only when B sends the, an acknowledgement back, A can be assured that the frame has been indeed delivered at B and it has been delivered without any errors. That is the role of acknowledgement. Okay. Now, in some systems, the receiver can also return a negative acknowledgement in case the frame has been received at B, but there are some errors with it. So rather than waiting for A's timer to expire and A to retransmit that particular frame, B has sometimes you can implement a negative acknowledgement also shown as NAC, N-E-S-E-K, for incorrectly received frame. It can immediately send an NAC back so that A will understand that the frame that has been received is with containing errors and it will simply retransmit that frame again. This is nothing more than a hint to the sender so that it can retransmit a frame right away without waiting for the timer to expire. So this is the concept of acknowledgements. So acknowledgements are special packets or special frames that are sent back by the receiver to the sender to convey that the frame has been received correctly and that the frame has been received and it has been received correctly. That means no errors. The second one is timers. Now you might ask me if there is no concept of a timer here, A has sent a frame to B and it is waiting for an acknowledgement. Unfortunately, either the frame is lost or the acknowledgement sent by B is lost. In that case, how long does A have to wait? You cannot keep a sender wait indefinitely for the acknowledgement to come back so that he can send the next frame out. In those cases, we implement timers. So one problem that simple ACK or NACK schemes fail to address is recovering from a frame that is lost. So if a frame is lost, you cannot keep the sender indefinitely waiting. You have to put a timer on that so that in case 
within the timer expires if the acknowledgement does not come back a has to assume that the frame is lost or the acknowledgement is lost and it has to send the frame again to b that is a retransmission so retransmission timers are used to resend frames that don't produce an acknowledgement i have sent a frame but i did not receive any acknowledgement if it usually takes maybe 2 seconds for the acknowledgement to arrive maybe i'll wait for 3 seconds and after that i have to assume that either my frame is lost or the acknowledgement for that particular frame is lost okay so when sending a frame you schedule a timer to expire at some time after the acknowledgement should have been returned that's what so i mean if you think that it might take 2 minutes you as you you wait for 2 minutes or 3 seconds sorry 3 seconds and if it hasn't been returned or if you don't receive the acknowledgement even after 3 seconds then you have to assume that it is lost and you have to retransmit that frame again if the timer goes to zero retransmit the frame so you wait for 3 seconds if there is no acknowledgement simply retransmit it the last one is the sequence number as i told you in my earlier example if uh because of an accident if the acknowledgement is lost b has already received the frame it has accepted it and if the acknowledgement is lost and a without the knowledge that that the acknowledgement is lost will assume that the actually indeed the original frame has been lost and it will retransmit it again so imagine that frame one is sent okay a has sent this is my sender a this is my receiver b and a has sent frame one this frame one is received at b and b has sent an acknowledgement back okay but unfortunately this acknowledgement did not reach a and is lost during transmit because of the timers a will wait for a uh, time for the acknowledgement and because this acknowledgement is not received it will retransmit f1 again but this f1 which is now sent from a is a duplicate under no circumstances duplicates must be accepted by your receivers so how does b distinguish this the newly arrived frame number 1 as a duplicate and not as an original frame simply because we are adding this one here this is a sequence number now after f frame 1 the next sequence b will be expecting is frame 2 so when it receives frame 1 again it will automatically understand that a has sent the earlier frame again and not a new one so when a resends frame 1 b will reject it or discard it but will still send the acknowledgement of f1 back to a now if this acknowledgement goes back to a a will understand that f1 has been received correctly by b and will now send frame number 2 it's a pretty simple common sense thing if i send a frame number 1 i am expecting an acknowledgement and if the acknowledgement comes i will send my next frame frame number 2 if it didn't come i'll simply retransmit it so this is the concept of sequence numbers so if you don't have sequence numbers there is no way for the receiver to identify uh, whether the received frame is uh, a, a copy or a an original frame so acknowledgements timers sequence numbers all put together will help implement error control at the data link layer so the data link layer has to implement all these things together to ensure that the frames that is being put on the machine or put in, being put on the media are received at the destination or not and whether they are received without any errors or not this is one of the concepts that data link layer has to take care of we have two different types of error control one is error detection techniques and the other is error correction techniques we will discuss it in our later videos now the second part of it is called as flow control fine you have you did your framing so you made the receiver uh, or you helped the receiver to identify the frame boundaries done and you also ensured that the frames have been received correctly at the uh, destination so there are no errors and if there are in case of errors you will retransmit the frames what if a sender is sending maybe 100 frames per second and the receiver has got only a capability of accepting 10 frames per second even though the frames are receiving without any errors the receiver is not capable enough of handling such data rate what are you going to do it is also up to the, it is also up to the data link layer to ensure that this condition does not happen a fast sender simply cannot send data at its own rate it has to send the data only at a rate acceptable by the receiver so if a receiver can accept only maybe 10 frames per second 
the sender has to send only 10 frames per second. It cannot simply blindly send 100 frames or 200 frames according to its wish or according to its data rate. This mechanism is called as flow control. So another important responsibility of the data link layer is to handle the condition where a sender that wants to transmit frames faster than the receiver can accept them. So if a sender wants to send uh, frames at its own uh, rate without even considering whether the receiver can accept them or not, that sort of conditions also should be handled by the data link layer itself. It is up to the data link layer to ensure that that does not happen. Okay. Now, this is called as flow control. So flow control deals with throttling the speed of the sender to match that of the receiver. If it is a slow receiver, your sender also should send the frames at an acceptable rate of the receiver only. It, can, it cannot simply send frames at its own rate. That is what we call as flow control. Generally, there are two different types of approaches to implement flow control. The first approach is called as feedback-based flow control. <clears throat> what does this mean is the receiver sends back information to the sender, giving it permission to send more data or at least telling the sender how the receiver is doing. In other words, the receiver will be conveying information to the sender about how many frames to send next. Maybe if I'm uh, free, if I have enough buffer space, if I have enough uh, resources to process, I might ask send 10 frames or send 20 frames. But unfortunately, maybe at a point, if I am unable to handle such data, I will send, I will ask only send me two frames. So whichever based on the feedback that the receiver is giving, the sender will adjust its data rate. That is called as feedback based flow control. So the receiver has to explicitly tell how much the sender can send. The second approach is something called as rate based. So in this rate based, there is no uh, requirement of the receiver to convey to the sender slow down or don't send the data or send only a limited amount of data. In this rate based flow control, the protocol has a built in mechanism that limits the rate at which senders may transmit data without using feedback from the receiver. So automatically uh, looking at the queues, looking at the number of uh, packet losses or number of packet drops, by looking at different parameters, your protocol can understand that maybe the receiver is not able to accept uh, the speed of the sender and it will automatically cut down the speed of the sender. So these are the two approaches which are used for implementing flow control. One of it is called as feedback based flow control. The other one is called as rate based flow control. Now, various flow control schemes uses a common protocol that contains well-defined rules about when a sender may transmit the next frame. So most of the protocols that are implemented at the data link layer do have specific criteria which will tell the sender or which will tell, which will convey to the sender when to send the next frame for the receiver, whether it is permitted or not. If it is permitted, how many frames can it send? These rules often prohibit frames from being sent until the receiver was grant has granted permission. So what these rules what does these rules do? So these rules will not allow the sender to send frames at its own rate. It will it can only send frames if it is permitted by the receiver either implicitly or explicitly. So all these things do come under flow control. So these are the three different design issues of the data link layer. First, you have to write about or talk about the different types of services offered by the data link layer to the network layer. There are three types of services that we discussed. And then we follow it up with framing techniques because the data link layer deals the data in frames. How does uh, a sender convey to the receiver about where to look for the start of the frame and where to look for the end of the frame? In other words, how does a receiver detect the frame boundaries? Once again, we studied four methods of framing. And finally, it is also the duty of the data link layer to ensure how it, how it handles uh, error control and flow control. So we studied about those two also. So these three are the different design issues of the data link layer. So if you like the videos, so do share and do subscribe and share with your friends. So thank you very much for watching. Take care.